Hey guys, hope you're ready for yet another 2D and 3D workflow. This time we're touching on how to use vector designs such as this one, which was created in Clip Studio Paint, as a way to kind of design unique 3D models in Blender. Lastly, we'll cover how to import the final 3D model into Clip Studio Paint to use as a basis for a concept art sheet. All right, let's get started. I'm going to start out by sketching out everything pretty roughly. To create our music box in Blender, we need a top-down drawing of the box so it can be extruded. Any other plane changes and details that need to be drawn should be on their separate layers. Since I'm drawing a top-down view of this box, I'll be starting with the outline of its base and top portion. I'm just drawing these out with the rectangle subtool here. For this design, I added some roundness to the corners by increasing the value over here. As for the design that will fill in this side, I'm going to be using the symmetrical ruler subtool to speed up the process. I'm changing the number of lines here to 4, so I can get a vertical and a horizontal symmetry at the same time. Before I start, I need to make sure the symmetry guidelines are centered exactly in the middle of the rectangles. Then, I just go ahead and start sketching. When it comes to designing the decorative elements on the box, I'll be doing this mostly myself, but remember there are a lot of pattern brushes on Clip Studio Paint's assets library that you can use to help you with this process. I have a reference board on my other screen that I'm constantly looking at to find inspiration. For designs like this, I like to have some reference to guide me, but I don't necessarily find the need to stay too close to it. We also need a pattern for the side plane of this box. So I use the rectangle subtool to draw that plane, then add the symmetry guidelines just as I did before. Once I'm happy with the sketch, it's time to draw the final design on a new layer. For this method, I'm going to need a vector file in the end. I can achieve this in two different ways. I can draw as normal on a raster layer, then after I finish the drawing, I can convert that to a vector layer by going to layer, convert layer. From this box, choose vector layer and then go to vector settings. Here you get a variety of options to play around with. Depending on the end result you need, you might have to experiment a little to figure out your desired settings. Although, I'd suggest having the anti-aliasing on medium at least for a smoother looking result. Also, it's a good idea to tick the box next to keep original layer. That way, you can have your original layer backed up in case you change your mind and then need to go back later on. The other workflow I can follow is drawing directly on a vector layer. This offers some really cool and exciting possibilities, such as being able to resize your work without losing quality and line correction tools that lets you make adjustments to your line work on the go. For example, with the correct line width subtool, you can change the thickness of your lines gradually without having to draw over them. Just pick which adjustment you need from this window here. By changing the value below, you can change how aggressively this adjustment is going to take effect. Another interesting tool a vector layer offers is the vector eraser. Just pick an eraser you'd like to use, then tick the box next to vector eraser over here. Now, your eraser has some different options available to it. For example, if you pick Erase up to intersection, the line you draw over will be erased until it meets another line. This way you can easily clean up your line work if you have any overlaps. If you pick the whole line option, well, just as it says, it will erase the whole line but will leave any intersecting ones. With the Touched Areas option, you get something similar to a regular eraser, except it will erase in a way that keeps the vector line clean. You can create a vector layer by going to Layer, New Layer, and then select Vector Layer. Here's a pro tip, you don't have to redraw your symmetry guides on this new layer. All you have to do is go back to your sketch layer and right click the ruler symbol and untick Link Guide to Ruler. Now, you can click and drag the ruler symbol to your new layer. Then, if you want to, you can link it back to this layer. Another thing to keep in mind before we start drawing is getting a really clean vector out at the end of this process. To achieve this, 
I'd suggest using a brush that doesn't have any fancy textures or anything like that. For this, I used the G-Pen tool and it definitely did the job. No matter which brush you pick, make sure to open the Subtool Detail palette, go to Correction tab, and enable Vector Magnet. This way, if you make multiple marks to draw a single line, they will be merged into a single vector line. Otherwise, when you import your vectors into Blender, you might get really messy lines and you might have to do some extra work to clean those up. I'm also using a bit of post-correction to improve the smoothness of my lines. Alright, enough talking, let's just get on with drawing. With the help of all the tools and options I've talked about, getting a clean vector drawing of our design doesn't take much time at all. Ideally, we'd be exporting these shapes as filled vectors, but unfortunately Clip Studio Paint doesn't support filled shapes as vector files just yet. But fear not, we'll be able to fill them in Blender, so this is not a problem at all. If we zoom in to investigate our vector line by selecting it with the Operation tool, we can see in some areas there are a lot of anchor points. To minimize the time that will be spent on cleaning this up in Blender, we can use the Simplify Vector Line subtool to reduce the number of anchor points and clean up our line work further. You can adjust how strong the simplification is going to be from this window here. Just draw over the part you want simplified. If we select it again afterwards, we can see that there are fewer anchor points now. Even though there are no gaps here, if you did happen to see one in your drawing, you can use the Connect Vector Line subtool to easily close them. Once I'm done with the final line art, it's time to go ahead and export my vector layers. We have to export each layer individually. So one by one, select the layer you want to export, then go to File, Export Vectors. Save out each layer as a SVG file and we are done. Let's move on to the Blender section. All right, let's get started with Blender. From File, import your Scalable Vector Graphic or SVG for short. The file might come imported a bit small, so if that happens, select all of the parts and scale them with S. As you can see, the parts come a bit segmented, so to join all of the parts together, I select them all and hit Ctrl J, which is short for join. I then right click and select Convert to Mesh, which basically converts all of the parts into a 3D mesh instead of a curve, which is a different type of 3D model. If you head into edit mode, you can see that all of the lines now consist of vertices, but even though it seems like they're all connected, they're still segmented. So to join vertices close together to create one big mesh, select all the vertices with A. Just make sure that you have the vertice option selected up here. And through mesh, clean up and merge by distance, you'll see a prompt where it says X amount of vertices have been removed. You can even adjust the number in the left corner if you want more simplified geometry, which I highly recommend. Although this can cause some parts to look a bit ugly, so that would again require a bit of manual cleanup on your part. Now we have two options. You can either select parts you want filled with Ctrl L followed by F, which stands for fill, and you can easily fill all of these shapes. And now, with that face selected, you can hit E for extrude. And suddenly the shape is three-dimensional. If you want inspiration for what kind of uses this has, check out this quick tips video back on our channel Polycosm. You can even go a step further and hit I for inset and then E again and kind of create more of an intricate shape. Just make sure that you don't inset it too much or the geometry just gets too broken. <laughs> So why is this useful? Trying to create the shape manually in Blender is really difficult and just drawing out this intricate shape in Clip Studio Paint beforehand just helps make this process so much easier. For our second option, you can convert the geometry back to a curve via Object, Convert to and Curve, which then lets you add a round thickness to all lines under Object Data Properties. Under Geometry and Bevel, adjust the depth. Remember, you can hold shift while adjusting to adjust in smaller increments. 
If you right click, you can also hit shade smooth, which kind of smooths out the geometry. You can also adjust the height under extrude. When you're finished adjusting, make sure to right click and convert the curve back to a mesh. Using the two techniques mentioned above and putting it all together, I was able to create a pretty unique looking music box. To export this model, you just head over to File, Export and choose FBX. Sometimes the model comes imported a bit broken, so if you have parts missing, you can throw on a triangulate modifier, which can be found under Modifier Properties. Using the techniques mentioned in this video, we can even animate some of the properties like the handle turning and the lid opening. All right, back to you, Omar John. Now we are back in Clip Studio Paint. As you can see, our music box has been added into our 3D assets library. If you want to learn how to do that, check out this video where we have covered that in detail. Let's drag and drop that into our scene and check it out. Yeah, I think this turned out really good. We have some animations available for it as well, such as spinning the handle and opening closing the lid. You can also open the Subtool Detail Palette, go to Light Source and move the Light Source around. Now that you have this asset in your library, you can use it for illustrations, comics, concept art, etc. If you have a comic centered around a haunted music box, for example, with this method, you can save yourself time when you have to draw the same box over and over again from different angles. And that's it. Just to recap, in this video, we went over how to create unique, intricate vector designs in Clip Studio Paint, which would otherwise be difficult to recreate in 3D. And using Blender's tools, we were able to add more three-dimensionality to the individual designs and put together a nice looking music box. As a final step, we imported said music box in Clip Studio Paint to serve as either a standalone concept art piece or work as a prop in a bigger scene. Thanks so much for watching guys, and make sure to check out Polycosm if you're interested in more 2D and 3D workflows. Bye!